Okay, let's continue with the fifth step. So in the fifth step, you will notice there are two arrows coming in into step five. The first one is from step four and the second one is from step one. So again, when you have an arrow coming in from step one, it means we need to consider the nullable non-terminal. Therefore, the nullable non-terminal as we have derived in step one is A. So in deriving step five, we need to consider the nullable non-terminal A. And then um, relations that we have derived in step four are listed here. Step five is the first of N and N means the right hand side of our rules. Since we have four rules, we need to derive four first N relations. So let's start with the first one. The first one is first A, B, C. So in order to derive this, we're going to look at the symbol on the leftmost. So the leftmost symbol is A. First A. So first A um, from step 4 is B. However, A is also a nullable non-terminal. Therefore, if we strike out A, the symbol on the leftmost here can also be B. Therefore, we need to union our first A with first B. Okay, so first B from step 4 is C. So B union with C is a set with B and C. Okay, let's move to the second rule. Second rule, we need to find first B, A. So first B, A means first B because B is the leftmost symbol. So first B um, taken from step 4 is B. For rule 3, we need to find first epsilon and first epsilon is empty set set with no element finally for rule 4 we need to find first c and first c from step 4 is c and this is how you derive um, the first n or the first of right side of each rule Okay, what is the next step after step 5? So if you notice, um, there is an arrow coming out of step 5 that goes direct to step 12. We only take this position if there is no nullable rule in our grammar. However, since we have a nullable rule, which is rule 3, we need to go and derive step 6 until step 11 first before we go to step 12. Okay, what is step 6? Step 6 is FDB or followed directly by. So if you look at step 6, there is an arrow coming in from step 1, which means we need to consider the nullable non-terminal A when we are deriving FDB relation. So how do we derive FDB? Step 6 or FDB is derived by looking on the right hand side of our grammar and looking at non-terminals first. Okay, we are looking at non-terminals. So in our rule 1, the non-terminals are A and B. And then in rule 2, the non-terminal is A. So to derive FDB, we look at non-terminal and look at the symbol right next to it. So we will have A FDB B. And then 
we will also have B F D B C okay we are done with rule 1 how about rule 2 so we have A A is not followed directly by anything so we are not listing it okay what about the consideration of nullable non-terminal okay uh, what if uh, our non the nullable non-terminal is not only A but also B? In this case, if we can cancel B from our rule, A here can also be followed directly by C. So we need to include A, F, D, B, C. But of course, this is in a hypothetical situation if um, B is also a nullable non-terminal. But in our current grammar, B is not a nullable non-terminal. Therefore, we only have these two FDB relation. Now let's go to step 7. So if you look at step 7, there is an arrow coming in from step 1 which means we need to consider our nullable non-terminal A and if you also noticed step 7 um, is shaded in light blue which is similar to BDW however if BDW has an arrow that goes from left to right DEO has an arrow that goes from right to left um, this hints that the way to derive DAO is similar to BDW but um, the opposite way. So I'm going to show you how exactly we can derive DAO relation. So step 7 is DAO or direct and off and to do that we will go one by one from rule 1 C DAO S. For step 2, A, D, E, O, A. For step 3, C, D, E, O, B. However, we still need to consider our nullable non-terminal and let's try striking out A from our grammar rules. So if we strike A in step 1, um, there is no change in the DEO relation because C is still the rightmost symbol. However, by striking out A from rule 2, A is no longer the rightmost symbol. Now we have B as the rightmost symbol which means we need to include B, D, E, O, A as part of the DEO relation. After step 7 is step 8 and step 8 is EO or end of relation and EO has an arrow coming in from step 7 which means we need to consider step 7 and EO is shaded in the same blue as step 3 which means the way to derive step 8 is similar to step 3. It also has a star on top of the arrow coming in from step 7 just like step 3 which has a star uh, on top of the arrow coming in from step 2. So step 8 EO is actually a reflexive transitive closure of DEO. So if we want to derive step 8 EO, we're going to start with the first one and I'm going to list everything from DEO. So CEOS, AEOA, BEOA, CEOB. I'm going to label this as from DEO. Next, I'm going to derive the transitive property of DEO. So the transitive property, um, 
there is no transitive property from this relation and then uh, I'm just going to write no transitive and finally I'm going to derive the reflexive property of EO so because we have S we will have S E O S because we have A we will have A E O A and then because we have B we will have B E O B oh we already have A E O A over here so I'm just going to remove this because we have lowercase b, we will have b, e, o, b. Then because we have lowercase c, we will have c, e, o, c. If you noticed, in our graph over here, the dependency graph, there is a plus and t symbol inside of it. What this essentially means is if we have... Um, uh, if, if rule 4 is for example like this, B can be derived to D, C. So we will not get D, D, E, O, B in step 7. However, um, in step 8, in E, O relation, we need to include all non-terminal in the reflexive part. Just like in step 3, you need to include all terminal. In the reflexive part in step 8 we need to include all non-terminal in the reflexive part therefore if we have if rule 4 is actually like this we can be derived to DC in the reflexive property of EO we need to include D E O D but of course our grammar is not like this therefore D E O D is not included and I'm going to label this as reflexive property and this is all the relations derived for step 8 and of